Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk about how sometimes three star books are better than five star books. So that statement, a three star book can sometimes be better than a five star book. Um, is, uh, well, it's a statement that sounds like nonsense, doesn't it, when you first hear it. But certainly for me, when I started thinking about it a bit, it started to to make some kind of sense. And I think what I'm trying to get at here is the, the idea that there is a difference between the objective quality of a book and how much pleasure an individual gets out of a book, which is something I've talked about on the channel before. But certainly for me, when I rate books, I try to rate them as much as I can <laughs> based on some kind of objective measure of quality rather than purely my own personal reaction to the book. Now that said, I do take into consideration my personal enjoyment a lot. And there are many books that I've rated four stars, um, which I know there are you know huge problems with in terms of the, you know, the quality of the writing and things like that. But I've had such a good time with them um, that, that you know, the pleasure I've got out of the book Know, overwhelms any concerns I might have about you know objective measures of quality. Um, it would be very rare for me to write a book five stars um, that I thought was in some way you know not a great book. Now having <laughs> having said that, I can think of at least one book that I did give five stars to, uh, which is Slugs by Sean Hudson. So as the title would suggest, that is a book about killer slugs. Um, it's about a, a small you know a town plagued by killer slugs. Um, and in many ways, it's a terrible book. It's not a book that's ever going to win, you know, the Booker Prize or the Nobel Prize for Literature or anything like that. It's a cheap and nasty horror novel. Um, but it is such a good example of that kind of fiction, that kind of cheap, exploitative fiction. And I enjoyed it so much. I had so much fun with that book that I did give it five stars. So I'm sort of arguing against myself a little bit here. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I was thinking about books I've read recently. So I read um, this recently, um, As I Lay Down by William Faulkner, and I gave it five stars. I thought it was, a, you know, it is clearly an excellent book. It is clearly a great work of literature. And whilst I wouldn't necessarily call it a fun book, um, I, I enjoyed the experience of reading it. Um, I was looking at my shelves to find another example of a, of a five-star book that was a bit different. Um, so I plucked out this one. Uh, we need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Shriver. So this is a great book. Um, obviously a much more modern book uh, than the Faulkner one. Um, and, um, you know, considered, I think, to be a, a, you know, certainly very solid, if not great work of modern literature. Um, I think it's a fantastic book about, um, about violence and about grief and about parenting. Um, a really, really excellent book, but a very difficult book to read. You know, there was some really horrible shit in this book. Um, and therefore, again, it's not a fun book. It's not a book you're going to have a load of fun with. Um, now, in terms of three star books, I've got two here, which I haven't actually read yet. They're on my TBR for this month. Um, but based on my experience with these series, I suspect that they will both be three star books. So those books are... Um, Panic in Philly, Executioner Book 15 uh, by Don Pendleton, um, and The Final Shot, Edge Book 16 by George D. Gilman. So these are both series that I am, you know, I'm working through. I'm reading them in order. So, you know, clearly I've read a number of both of them, over a dozen of each of them. Um, and they're books that I, I really enjoy. I get a lot of fun from, but they are in no, you know, they're in no way great books. They're not even necessarily great examples of the type of book they are. But there's something about them that really appeals to me. And with both of these series, I think the majority of the books that I've read, I've given three stars to. There have been some that I've given four stars to because there have been some that do something different with the formula um, or just, you know, do what they're trying to do exceptionally well. And so they've ended up being four star rates for me. Um, but I think that, you know, the odds are these will both will be three stars, as have most of the books in both of these series for me. But I love them and I will read them. You know, I try and read one every month. I failed recently a couple of months, but I try and read one, one every month because they're just a lot of fun and they really appeal to me. And there are times when I would much rather read Panic in Philly than We Need to Talk About Kevin or something similar. Um, 
you know, there are times I'd much read, rather read an edge book than a Faulkner book, um, even though I know that I am going to get more out of Faulkner or Lionel Shriver or another, you know, well-respected author. Um, I'm going to get more, you know, kind of cultural enrichment uh, and I'm going to, it's going to make me think more about my life, you know. Um, Panic in Philly is not going to make me reflect on existence. Um, it's going to be a fun, you know, a fun, violent ride, um, but it's not going to hold any deeper meaning for me. It's not going to be a book that in 20 years time um, I remember fondly. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a piece of entertainment. And that for me is 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 how I read. So I read for entertainment, it's my main source of entertainment. You know, I do watch a bit of TV, but I don't watch much TV. I don't watch that many films anymore. So for me, having a mixed diet um, in my reading is really important because if all I read was Faulkner, uh, I'd, I'd probably get very bored of Faulkner very quickly. Um, so I, I think having that variety and having a mix of three-star reads and five-star reads um, is a really good thing. And to come back to comments I've made before about DNFing. The first time I tried to read this, the Faulkner book, um, I DNF'd it. I can think of another um, book that I ended up giving five stars to, The, the Secret History by Donna Tarr, which I DNF'd twice before finally reading it. And that comes back to the point I've made before, that sometimes it's just not the right time for you in a book. And it doesn't mean it's a bad book, it just means it's not the right time. And, you know, often those times when I struggle with a, you know, a weightier book um, are times when I then turn to Matt Bolan um, and, you know, I have a bit of fun for a few hours reading uh, about the executioner, you know, travelling to another city in America and killing lots of hoodlums. Um, and then, you know, maybe in a week's time I go back to the more difficult book um, and that time my, my mind is in the right place and I really enjoy it. So... That's kind of the point of this video, I think, is that reading is a very subjective thing. And the same reader can have very different reactions to a particular book, depending on the mood they're in when they read it. So whilst, you know, for me, something like Panic in Philly will probably always be a three star book and something like As I Lay Dying will always be a five star book because I recognise the inherent quality in it at times. A three star book is much better for me. It's a much better pick for me to read than a five star book. And that's why I think it's really important that we don't judge each other about what we're reading. Um, I've had, I haven't had a huge number of judgy comments um, on my Girl Borgers videos, but I have had some. Um, and I know that Michael K. Vaughan mentioned in a recent video of his. Um, that he, you know, quite often gets judgy comments from people about his reading choices. Um, and I, th I think it's important that we that we don't judge each other, that we all, you know, the joy of reading and the joy of booktube is about experiencing different things through the books that we read. Um, and that's why, um, you know, both Faulkner and Mac Boland uh, sit very comfortably on my shelves because they, you know, they both, they, they give me a bit of breadth. They give me something, they each give me something different. But equally, if all you want to read is Backbone, then, then more power to you. Um, you know, enjoy it. So yeah, do let me know what you think about this. Do you, do you sometimes find yourself craving three-star books uh, when you could be reading five-star books? Um, I know I do. You know, I, there are times when I could not face reading um, a, you know, a very, great work of literature even though I know it's going to be a wonderful experience if I'm if I'm in the right mood for it because I know that I'm not in the right mood for it what I'm in the mood for is a bit of mindless silence uh, and I turn to Edge or Backbone for that right time for a random book from the shelves and, and here is a book that I strongly suspect will be a three-star read um, we shall see so that book is Sledgehammer by Walter Wager so Walter Wager um, is an author I only know about because he wrote the book, and I've now completely forgotten the name of the book and forgot to look it up, but he wrote the book that ended up being um, Die Hard 2. So Die Hard 2, like Die Hard, is based on a book, uh, and that book was by Walter Wager, and it's about you know terrorists hijacking a, uh, an airport. Um, anyway, it looks like a lot of fun. A 70s thriller. Uh, it, it advertises itself on the cover as being a mind-shattering tale of thrilling adventure, hard as diamond, sharp as a razor. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're really good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.